Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be finishing up our series on the DHC-4 here. We're going to deal with takeoff, we're going to deal with a little bit of navigation, and a little bit of landing as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So we've got this big thing running and everything's all looking good, our controls are all set, uh, we've checked every different option, and we've shut off our master switch. Everything's pretty much solid and uh, ready to rock for this thing. So what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be flying a couple different types of navigational tools here, just to kind of make it a little bit easier for ourselves for the purposes of navigation here. Now we have a couple options on this one obviously uh, the first one is going to be our gps pretty straightforward uh, for those of you familiar with the gps that's already built into flight sim you already know how all this works important thing to watch out for though is the cdi button does not work if you want to use the gps you have to actually float over here and set this to the appropriate mode for it otherwise you're going to be a little bit disappointed in that regard uh, the other option you have of course is we can do adf or we can do dead reckoning or we can also look out the window and do some pilotage but for this one we're actually going to be using some uh, vor navigation here well, we've already got ourselves uh, set up to a frequency of 115.30 this is going to be your destination we're basically going to hang north until we can pick up this and then we're going to fly the radial down along with it we also have an adf frequency dialed a little bit north and east of us so that we have the ability to kind of lock on to that if we need to for our particular flight here. Uh, one thing that we'll see uh, is that unfortunately we don't have a lot of these fun audio bits and if we wanted to we could set the GPS out for this but I'm not going to worry about this too much. I'm going to go ahead and flip on the transponder that'll let everybody know that we're ready to go and then we're ready to get this going. So this aircraft is uh, really straightforward. You know, it looks kind of bulky, it looks kind of odd but it actually works really, really well. So to get us rolling here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make us over to the runway. I'm going to go ahead and disengage the parking brake. So now the nice thing is because we have two different engines here, we can keep our throttles kind of separate. So if you look above your head, I'm going to go ahead and kill the gust lock here. And we're going to go ahead and give it just a little bit of power on the uh, right engine there. This thing will get going real nice. Ah, there we are. Delightful. It's like turning in place. It's a very, very easy to aircraft to operate. So as we're making our way up to the runway here, we're going to go ahead and uh, fit in some flaps. Uh, the manual basically describes we can use just about any flap setting for takeoff. Uh, for me, I like to use a 15. That seems to be just enough flaps to be able to get us uh, safely airborne without a lot of, you know, the usual shenanigans and goings-ons and things like that. Just checking our approach here, making sure there's nothing coming down the line. Doesn't look like the wind is coming. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do a short field takeoff here, so I'm not going to worry about too much about using all that lovely runway. One thing you got to watch out for is this thing picks up speed and you're up a little bit higher than you think you are. If you actually looked at this aircraft straight down, you'll realize you're up off the floor. The floor is down there. <laughs> we are jacked right now. If you drop your pen, you are done. Let's go give it a little more power and align ourselves up with the runway. It's going to take a quick look. All right, that looks pretty good. Swing us over here. There's our little center line. All right, that looks pretty good. That looks good to me. And go ahead and tap the brakes. We're going to go ahead and hold it right there. Sweet. So we're going to go ahead and I'll run through our normal run-up business here and make sure everything is set correctly. I just like to double-check my trims and stuff like that. One of the things you can do here is we can float down to the elevator trim. We're just going to make sure it's in the correct takeoff pitch range. Uh, right now, our nose is just a little high, so I'm going to give it a couple taps there. And you can see that we've set our trim correctly for takeoff there. Some people can talk about using a little bit of aileron trim on this. I have not found the need, at least with my controllers. Maybe if you're forced feedback, you need it. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure my parking brake is set, which it is. We're going to go ahead and do our run-up. Our run-up on this one is uh, very, very straightforward. Uh, we need very little power to make sure everything works here. I'm going to go ahead and I'll give it about that. That's pretty good. We want about 2,000 revolutions per minute. Delightful. Go ahead and exercise the prop. All right, looks pretty good right there. I like that a lot. We're going to go ahead and click off all of our magnetos to just double check to make sure those are functioning properly. Gonna go ahead and test the old car, Pete. That's car, Pete, for you. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and pull it to idle and see if the engine cuts out. Normally, what we do too is we could test the auto feather and everything like that. All right, that looks pretty good. Give it a couple RPM. And we're ready to rock. So our flaps are set, our controls. We're going to go give everybody the uh, good old-fashioned wipering of the controls, make sure everything's pretty smooth. Leg gear is locked down. We'll make sure our gear handle is in the position that our controls are. Our flaps are set to go. We're ready to rock. All right, so we're going to take off, and uh, we're going to basically bring ourselves up to north and uh, get everything ready to go. So when we take off, pretty straightforward. I'm going to hold the brake, disengage. We're going to go ahead and push the power up to 30 inches here. So what we want to do now is uh, hold the brake harder, apparently. Uh, what we want to do here is we just want to make sure that we're producing about 22, 2300 RPM. And I'm looking down, we've got 2200 RPM, which is perfect. So now we're just going to smoothly apply the rest of the throttle. 
until we get ourselves up to our takeoff power. That'll do it. Once you get up to about 55 knots, you're just going to give a gentle tuck on the controls. You don't have to go any harder than that. And as we start to lighten, you're just going to hold the front wheel just a couple feet off the ground and let the aircraft go ahead and climb. We are a multi-engine aircraft, so one of the things we're going to do right away is we're going to go ahead and slam up the handle for flaps. And, uh, and actually, not the handle for flaps, rather, the handle for gear. Give us a little bit of moments. We're going to get up to 100 knots. Go ahead and top up that last notch of flaps. You're going to get a major nose down tendency as soon as you release that handle, by the way. So just be kind of mindful of it. I'm going to go ahead and continue climbing at our power. Remember, uh, things go wrong uh, when you change them. So I'd like to go ahead and get myself a little tiny bit of altitude before I go. Uh, climb, of course, on this one. Uh, I think it's like 106 knots if you really, really want to get going up in a hurry. Uh, we don't need to do that. Now we're going to go ahead and reduce to our continuous power here. I'm going to go ahead and move my head down. We're going to go ahead and pull to the top of the green arc on that side. And then we're going to go ahead and do the exact same with our RPM lever here. That's it. And now we're at maximum continuous and we're at an unusual attitude. <laughs> Just to get about things you have to watch out for. Also, welcome to the desert. Isn't this beautiful? It feels I feel like I like... Ah, so I'm sunburned just sitting here thinking about how hot it would be right now. All right, we are nice and airborne. Uh, normally, this would be the point where I recommend, you know, engaging the automatic pilot and stuff like that. But we don't have an automatic pilot. So unfortunately, we have to kind of do things the old-fashioned way here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring myself, like I said, roughly north is uh, going to be kind of a desired position here. There we go. And we're just going to smoothly climb. Like I said, right about 115, 110, right in there seems to be a pretty good climb speed. Uh, one thing you're going to watch out for with this one especially is it, it has a really kind of funny tendency if you hit the pitch control to pitch up really violently. So uh, when you do tap the uh, elevator trim, just be a little careful with it. I just find that it's a little bit sensitive in the bad way, not a little sensitive in the good way kind of a thing like that. All right. So that's about our north heading. We're just going to start cruising up here. If we make an accident, we can always end up in denial. Ha <laughs> ha. No, just kidding. We're not even close. All right. So we'll go make our way up just a bit here. All right. That's pretty good. As you climb, of course, you're going to be losing some power. Don't forget to apply a little bit more to keep you into the appropriate power range here. Now, it's a very strong tendency to uh, go ahead and pull to the left. But like on my controls, you'll see it's starting to wander over to the left like that. Uh, welcome to having two propellers spinning the same direction. It's an engineering choice. Uh, they said they wanted to keep the thing cheap, so they used the same engine on both sides. And uh, that's what we get as a result. Uh, this aircraft is a conventional aircraft in the sense that because we are propeller driven, uh, when it comes to cruise power and cruise climb and altitudes, generally any aircraft altitude that is appropriate for, you know, like a Cessna 172 or something like that is going to be appropriate for this plane. We do not have a pressurization system. Uh, so as a resultant on that one, remember I have that leaky ramp door in the back. Uh, it's going to make it very, very uncomfortable for your passengers if you go too high. So generally, if it's just you up front, you know, you can go as high as you need to because you got a you know, portable oxygen, basically. If you're bringing a bunch of passengers with you, keep that in mind because you don't want to give them a headache kind of a thing. All right. So we're cruising up. You can see we're getting about, not too bad, about 800 feet per minute, which is too, too much. Every once in a while, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to come over and you're going to have to push the throttles back forward again. Again, leave the propeller control uh, where it needs to be because it'll take care of itself kind of a thing. Every once in a while, we want to go take a peek real quick at our engine systems here. You can see we're producing eh, quite a bit of power. We're basically, uh, what is that, about 500% of our thrust? Or not 500, 50%. Five units of thrust. <laughs> And you could also observe uh, that our, we're well within the uh, good range as far as temperatures goes. Once we've gotten ourselves enough altitude and we're confident, we can go ahead and flip off the uh, pumps for the fuel system. But um, like I said, I'm not going to do anything just yet. I'm going to give myself a little bit more altitude and I try to reach out and detect that VOR signal that we desperately need to get ourselves safety to our destination here. All right, swing it over this way. And again, this plane is just easy handling airplane. You're not going to have to work your controls hard at any point. Uh, when we go in for landing, uh, that's when you're going to have to exercise your control skills a little bit here. But like I said, we're just kind of making our way up. We'll level off at 5,000 feet. All right, we've reached our climb altitude of 5,000 feet. I'm going to go ahead and bring the nose down just a little bit here. Uh, this aircraft, um, it's going to take a lot of trim to get this thing to be stable in a nice, gentle climb here, or a nice, gentle level off. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to hold the nose down, give it just a couple blasts of trim, and I'm leaving climb power in for a moment here. The reason being is if we leave the climb power in, we'll get up to our cruise speed sooner, which will actually save us a lot of frustration later on. So I'm just going to kind of let that kind of do its thing. Now, cruise on this one is a very, very simple affair. It's simply a matter of setting the power so that the needles agree with whatever it is you're trying to do as far as how fast you want to go. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. You can see I've got myself my little needles here. I'm going to go ahead and pull the power back to get to 32 inches here. That's going to be the top of my climb. And all I have to do now is I have to grab onto my propeller handle and back it up to about eh, 2050, I believe, is the correct range. So now that I've done that, you can see that the aircraft is now reducing power. It's uh, reducing speed. It's getting a little bit quieter. Uh, everything's going to start cooling off on us in just a few minutes here. And we're basically going to proceed on course uh, towards our destination, which is a little bit further up north. So that's it as far as uh, cruise settings goes. When you're in cruise, make sure you go ahead and flip up your fuel pumps. I've already got that a few moments ago. So fuel boost is uh, set to normal. And now it's just a matter of basically making it to your destination. There's uh, no complex fuel management on this aircraft. A lot of what you're going to be doing is just going to be kind of keeping an eye on things and just make sure like nothing's overheating or like, you know, you're not, not running out of fuel in one tank and keeping fuel on the other. It's really, that's all there is to it for this part of the operation. Remember, since there is no automatic pilot, you are going to have to fly this by hand. Now, some people say, of course, I can't handle this. I really, really need somebody to hold the wheel for me. Well, believe it or not, Microsoft gives you a nice little tool. You have a flight assistant. If you needed to, you could actually turn on automatic piloting and you can actually have the AI fly this plane for you as long as you have some kind of destination programmed over into our GPS. Now if you have that that'll work perfectly for you because then you don't have to stress out so much about the flight if you need to run down the hall and get some coffee or something like that. So we'll go ahead and uh, skip our trip here and I'll get it close close to descent. Oh my one of these things that when I go plan these all out I'm like oh this will be about the correct distance and then I miss the digits. Whew. Man, Egypt is a lot bigger than you think it is uh, when you actually got to fly across it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we've been cruising along here. We're heading up to Luxor International Airport. Uh, that's basically going to be off at 12 o'clock in a few moments here. Uh, one thing that we've done is uh, we've kind of started our approach here. Is we've gone ahead and dialed in their local VOR frequency. Uh, one of the things we want to check, though, when we do this, we're going to get everything on nice and balanced. So we want to confirm that we're in the correct mode. You'll notice our GPS here, even though we have something locked into it, will not show up over here depending on how you program the flight plan. I believe that is a GPS bug. I don't think that's something with the aircraft. Uh, that's just something to do with working title here, unfortunately. So one of the things we have, of course, is um, we're going to flip this over to nav mode. We're going to go ahead and uh, play with our CDI here until we get it lined up the way that we want it. And we'll go keep cranking that there. And whoa, a bit too much, a bit too much. Boop, boop. That looks pretty good right there. So it looks like we need to come to about 15 degrees for our heading here. Uh, we're pretty much right on track, so I'm not going to worry about this thing too much. Now, we're a big, big airplane. And uh, like I said, uh, even though we are, you know, short takeoff and landing and everything like that, we do have a significant amount of mass. You know, we are definitely not a 737 or anything that heavy, but we're still, you know, 26, 25,000 pounds of mass, which you're going to have to bring down to the ground safely as you're going to be doing any sort of approaches that you're going to be doing to a landing here. So for the purposes of this uh, flight, what we're going to do is uh, kind of hang around and uh, kind of line ourselves up with the runway. All right, so we're going to be doing the ILS for runway two here. So the ILS for runway two, pretty straightforward. Our frequency today is going to be 108.5. So I'm just going to reach over here. We'll go ahead and get that dialed in pretty early. And our approach course is going to be 20. Oh, watch out for the volume control. 108.50. That should be the one. So I don't think we're going to pick anything up out this far. Uh, one thing you want to check, of course, when you're doing an ILS, make sure you're on nav and also make sure you're on the ILS mode. Our initial altitude today is going to be 4,500 feet. And our initial fix there is going to be 2,200 feet. So it's actually pretty impressive how high we have to be during this approach. So what I will do now is I will go ahead and start our descent. Now, getting this aircraft to come down is not too bad. As I was mentioning a few moments ago, it's a pretty heavy plane. So if we just cut the power and just dive, um, you're probably going to shot cool a couple things. You have to kind of be mindful. Uh, generally, what we're going to do is we're going to make a minor reduction in power here. We're going to come down to about 25, which is going to be more than enough reduction. And we're just going to let the nose kind of come over on its own and uh, start as a gentle descent. As always, uh, remember that you don't want to blow anybody's eardrums. Well, not that you would, but you're going to cause a lot of uh, sinus pressure, to say the least, if you uh, go ahead and uh, come down too quickly here. So I'm going to aim for about 500 feet per minute. You can see that at 25 inches over there on our throttle. Uh, we're coming down nicely. Now, this is smooth. I'm not accelerating too fast. You know, I'm not exceeding any speeds or anything along those lines. Uh, just a nice, gentle descent. Obviously, uh, plan ahead uh, whenever you're doing this so that you can go ahead and predict it. Easiest way, of course, is uh, we know we're doing about 140 knots. Half of 140 is 7. So if we wanted 3 degrees, that would be uh, 700 feet per minute if you want to kind of think about it, if you want to do a standard 3 degree descent here. Uh, this works pretty well. Like I said, it's just a matter of kind of planning out ahead. Since 140 is pretty close to 120 that's about two nautical miles per minute so if you know that you're for example at 10,000 feet uh, that would be 20 nautical miles we'd have to start making our way down towards our destination so that we could uh, safely uh, put down for that particular purpose so let's go ahead and get ourselves all lined up with the end of the runway 
it is just so fascinating to me how the Nile River literally creates life. Like you can see just this huge region of all green, five feet later, deserts. Alrighty then, you're looking pretty good for our approach. So now we're going to make our way down to the ground with this thing. It's uh, pretty easy to land this thing. I find that uh, one of the things you have to watch out for is when you start really adding on all the flaps, it gets very lazy. I guess that's really the best way to describe kind of its a performance profile. Now, it's just kind of one of those things. All right, let's go ahead and start swinging over here. And yeah, we'll start lining ourselves up the runway. Uh, we are definitely, uh, call the ball is uh, up into the right. So we're going to line ourselves up at the runway. Yeah, as usual, we're going to get a couple things all ready to go. We're going to make sure our fuel pumps are in the on position. We're going to go ahead and enable the landing lights. Just to give everybody a quick little heads up, just to let them know that we're coming down to the ground here. Now, the aircraft, of course, has a million to one speeds that you have to kind of keep an eye out for. Our landing gear, of course, are going to be 130-ish. So uh, we're pretty good to put them down at any time. One thing I do like is the landing gear, because uh, when you do enable the landing gear, what happens happens is it's going to go ahead and create a little bit extra drag it's i don't know if it's a flight sim thing or it's something with the model itself but for whatever reason whenever you are flying these kind of aircraft the more flaps you put in the more lift you get in without the consequence of getting additional drag it's just i don't know why it's like that but it's just it's just kind of one of those things so what we're going to do now is we're going to start lining ourselves up for a landing here i've got everything pretty good i got kind of take a look one of the things i like to actually do is just stick my head down and back just a little bit i just need to see the top of the needle and i need to see what my airspeed is that's up plenty a little high i'm gonna go ahead and bring in our first notch of flaps here good idea to keep an eye on the carburetor temperature i'm not really worried about carburetor ice i think you can guess why start reducing a little bit of speed i'm up into the right here and we're gonna hold about a hundred here all right gonna bring in our next notch of flaps we got a bit of a crosswind i think i've never flown not in a crosswind one of those things that uh, when I was in flight training, that like you never had crosswinds. You just didn't fly in crosswind days. In the real world, I don't think I've ever gotten to fly in a not crosswind day. It's like every single day is a crosswind. It's just so obnoxious. All right, let's go ahead and get there. Altitude's pretty good here. Go ahead and bring in our next notch of flaps. We're going to go ahead and push our propeller control all the way forward, and we want to make sure that's ready to go. There we go. Now what you're going to start to see is we start to slow down and bring in those next flaps. Ah, the new turbulence model. That's what we're going to see. <laughs> so what you're going to observe is uh, we're starting to make our way down here is a little needle that I was telling you about in the beginning that's a backup airspeed indicator is going to start choo-chooing across from right to left here. Go ahead and bring in those last couple clicks of flaps. I'm going to push that nose down a little bit. we got more than enough here. That's pretty good. We can come to our left just a touch and we're a little high, but interestingly enough, the ILS does not say we're high. Perfect. And now you'll notice we have the triangle and we have the diamond. Uh, the triangle is for heavy, the diamond is for light. Uh, we're pretty light. Uh, we burnt quite a bit of fuel literally flying across North Africa to get here today. So I'm not too worried about that. All right, so that's going to be our approach speed. You're going to have to do some very aggressive power changes with this thing, with the new turbulence that we're getting at Microsoft these days. So don't be surprised. Now, interestingly enough, our ILS and our PAPI do not agree with each other in the slightest. Uh, welcome to Flight Sim again. All right, got to go ahead and take it in. Nice and easy. We're going to produce a little bit of power. Remember, that's our over-the-fence speed there. Pull the nose up just a little bit. That's pretty good. Kind of between the diamond and the triangle. You can see that pretty clearly. But one of the things I love about this is you can literally just fly that needle basically down to the ground here. All right, this thing likes to float. I'm going to pull the throttle all the way to idle. And what we're going to do is remember that we're a couple feet up in the seat here. So we're going to hold the nose just like this, and you're going to feel the plane get a little heavy. And there's the back two tires. And we're just going to let the nose come down. Now, if we want to apply reverse, pull the handle out just like that. Apply reverse. It's not the most exciting reverse. I'll give you that. Go ahead and push that forward. Release it. A couple taps to the brake. And now we are all set and clear of the runway. Isn't that pretty cool? So this plane, again, can land on just about everything as far as uh, the different types of things. I've landed in 1,500 feet with this thing without uh, too much difficulty. And again, it's a really, really impressive aircraft in that kind of a regard. Let's go ahead and taxi our way off. We'll go ahead and do our after landings here. I'm going to make sure our fuel boost pumps are all off. Uh, we don't need any of that stuff right now. Give it a quick little blast. Kind of start to bring up our flaps. Uh, this is a good time, of course, to double check to make sure everybody's still in the back that they didn't jump out halfway through our flight. <laughs> Give it a little bit of gas. So as you can see, this is a really solid package. Uh, there's a really, really a lot of nice stuff here. It's a pretty cost-effective package for those of you who are interested in it. The starter procedure is a little different than what it says in the book, but again, a lot of that's just been optimized for single pilot. 
Yo, operations, but other than that, pretty cool plane. Enjoy.